So now that you have a handle on the basic user interface of Grasshopper, I want to go into a little uh, more detail on the user interface and a few different things you can do to help you manage your definitions as they get longer. So here I've just created three basic curves in Rhino. I've then set these curves within Grasshopper and then create a little definition that um, lofts those curves and then populates points along the geometry, which is the surface that's created. Um, and then we make line SDLs, so start direction length vertical lines from those points, pipe those lines, and then cap them. So a few quick things I want to show you. First is this idea of fancy wires. So you can see some of these wires look different um, depending on which components they're connected to. And the reason for that is that um, it tells you a little bit about what's happening inside the component. Um, for example, if I pull a panel out of this component here, you can see that this component, this curve component, only has one geometry. So when you see a single line like this, that just means there's one geometry. Like if I pull it out of this loft, I have one loft. If I have a double line and I see what's happening in there, that shows that I have multiple geometries coming out of that output. So this can help you read a definition before actually going in and going under the hood to see what's happening inside there. It gives you just a basic overview of kind of the complexity of geometry that you're creating. So the double line is multiple items within a list and the way Grasshopper works is it organizes geometry and data in these lists which are um, in this case being shown through the panel. So a list always starts with zero and then counts upward from there um, and you can have list but you can also have lists of lists so multiple lists coming out of one component and that's what happens when you have this double uh, kind of dashed line here. So if I see what's happening out of this pipe geometry, you can see I actually have multiple lists, each one starting with zero. So when you have a complex list of lists, they're going to show up as this double dashed line. So these are called fancy wires. If you don't see that, it's because under display they're turned off. So you can turn those on or off under display draw fancy wires. And I'd keep it on because it's really useful and gives you a good understanding of how the definition is, ha is working. Um, the next thing I want to show you is just how to organize your definition visually and graphically on the screen. So you can see like in this case I have these three curves, they're kind of just all over the place and um, it's really important that you keep your definitions clean and organized because oftentimes you're collaborating with other people and it can be a little difficult to access a definition if all the components are all over the place. So the more organized you are and the more clear you are at representing the information, the better and easier it will be for your collaborators to pick up where you left off and to actually help solve issues that you might be having and troubleshoot the definition. So in this case I can um, select these three components and you'll see I get these little uh, black and white icons here. If I hit the left arrow that will align these icons along the left edge of the components. If I hit the right arrow, it'll align them on the right side. And then if you hit this little um, thing with the three, with the little um, stripes, you can select that and that'll evenly space the components that you have selected. So that's a really nice way to just kind of keep the definition clean and organized. Another thing you can do is actually group definitions and parts of definitions together. So for example, let's say I just want to group uh, this first chunk, which is the lofting part of the, the definition. I can select them all, right click and say group. And the nice thing about that is you can then move that whole group by selecting anywhere in the group with your left mouse button and dragging it around. You can also right click on it and name it. So I could say this is my loft here. And that makes it really clear for someone that that's where you're executing that set of commands. You can also change the outline type. So right now it's a box. You can change it to a blob. You can change it to a rectangle. rectangle. And then if I move these closer you'll see it kind of absorbs into the other one. So it really just depends on the look that you're going for. I tend to prefer the box outline, it's just a little cleaner and simpler. The other thing you can do is right click and change the color of it. So depending on different geometries or, or um, who's working on what part of the definition, you might want to change the color of that outline. So that would just be white for example. Um, another thing you can do is actually leave notes. So if you double click and type in scribble, um, you can actually include text within your definition which would be really helpful. Um, like, hey, I'm working on this, I haven't figured it out, please start here. Um, or just general notes to yourself, because as you open these months after you create them, you might totally forget what you were doing. So it's really helpful to include little hints for yourself in the form of these notes to know where to pick up. So you could write, this is where the loft occurs. 
and you can also change the size of that but um, it's really useful to keep those kind of notes um, around you can also scribble so this little button here is the scribble and you can change the size of that and the color of the line and then you can actually draw like hey this is the area to work on so when you come back here make sure you're looking at that part of the definition you can always select these and delete them um, and you don't have to have them there forever um, so that's really great you can also include notes and panels sometimes I'll create a panel and I'll just keep it off to the side and I'll say this is the loft um, and that's just another way to keep a note so it really depends on you you'll see different people use different ways of of including notes around their definition but all of them are very helpful the other really useful thing which we covered a little bit is just previewing on and off different parts of the definition so as they get these get complicated you won't want to have all of these previewed on so it might be that you select all of these preview them off and then you can see really um, one by one by turning them on one by one what how the definition was constructed and this is a really good way to just understand what the person who made the definition even if that's you was thinking when they created it so yeah they had a loft here and then it looks like they populated the geometry so I'll right click turn that on okay that made a bunch of points on the surface they then made lines on those points and so I can see those lines and then I can right click and um, preview on the pipe okay that made pipes and then they capped the pipes um, the other thing is sometimes you want to bring this actual geometry into Rhino so you can make 2D or use it for some other modeling that you're doing in Rhino. And to do that, you have to bake the geometry from Grasshopper into Rhino. So you can bake any component you want. I could bake just the pipes or I could select multiple things and bake them. In this case, maybe I'll just bake the very last thing. I'll right click on that component and you can just hit bake. And then you can actually choose the layer that you want to bake the geometry onto. So maybe I'll choose layer 2 say OK. You can see this is now geometry that's in Rhino. So those are my original curves, but these are the new pipes that I've baked into Rhino. So I can move these around, I can make 2D, I can chop them up. So that's real geometry now in Rhino once you've baked it in there. Um, the other thing, let me just go ahead and hide all this, is that you might want to uh, preview different colors of your definition um, in the preview over here. And so to do that, you can actually go to display and pick one of these previews and we could do uh, like a custom preview and then you just plug the geometry in and then you can do uh, like a color over here and you can choose a color or you can go into the params and go to the input and choose color swatch which is what I tend to do and then if you plug that swatch into the material then you'll see that geometry actually previews in that color so I could preview that off and then I could keep this on I could preview all this stuff off and then you'll see that that um, really keeps those as a separate kind of preview from the rest of the definition It doesn't really matter for something so simple as this but as things things get really difficult and complicated it's really nice to have different color previews to just to understand where things are and what they're doing in your scene it's very helpful um, the other thing you could do if um, you have a component that's really taking a lot of time and you want to make some adjustments and you don't want it to be updating constantly you can actually disable a component so if I right click on this one for example and I say I check enabled that will disable the component and anything that happens after it will also be disabled you can see it's kind of all grayed out and again that's really only useful if you're doing something that has a lot of geometry and takes a long time to compute I'll usually disable the component and then make all my slider changes you know change everything I want to change and then once I'm happy I'll right click and then um, re-enable it and then it will turn on with the updates in place and the last thing I want to show is just saving so if you want to save this grasshopper definition you actually have to save it in grasshopper it's not the same thing as a rhino file so if you file save document that'll save a gh extension file which is a grasshopper file and if you have any geometry that you've used in in rhino that you created in rhino and are importing using the container objects in Grasshopper you have to make sure you save the Rhino file and the Grasshopper file. If all of the geometry is created just in Grasshopper so it's not referencing anything in Rhino all you really need to do is save the Grasshopper file and when you open that Grasshopper file again it'll automatically preview all that geometry in whatever Rhino scene that you have open so just keep that in mind the only thing that would be important is that the units are the same in the Rhino scene as the Grasshopper scene.